Alright guys, I have finally completed my exam period, so today I will be talking about the overclock, the brand new feature which will be implemented during the upcoming update and that has been quite controversial within the Asphalt 9 community, so today I will share with you all my honest take on this, so take a seat and get ready because today's video won't be a really short one. Being completely honest, I was already aware that Overclock would arrive to the game for the last two months, the thing is that I wasn't fully aware of the exact details about it, same as I was aware that uh, you know, a new currency would be added even before knowing that the season tokens would end up being completely eliminated from the game, so this new currency ended up being the Overclock chips, which will be required in order to successfully overclock a few different cards each season. The Overclock, however, has deeper implications and in order to fully understand why Gamelot decided to introduce something like this, I do really think it's worth to note a few key factors, so let's begin with them. The first thing that you need to be fully aware of if you guys weren't already is that despite Asphalt 9 Legends is a game that you can download and play without having to pay a single dollar, at the end of the day it's not a public service because same as public services are not free since you, you know, you fund them through your taxes, Asphalt 9 is a private business, so the most important thing within the business industry is to make your business successful and profitable. That's why if you think about it, there are basically not a single game which could be compared to Asphalt 9 in terms of graphics on mobile devices that is 100% free to play because it takes money to make an attractive game and keep it alive. So yes, Asphalt 9 has microtransactions because that's the main monetization system on mobile devices and before any of you guys mention it, ads, despite they provide an extra income source, can be compared to the total amount of money microtransactions provide in most of the big free to install game. Microtransactions favor those who spend more than those who don't, you know, spend at all, which is quite obvious since if you spend and you suddenly win more often as a result of that, you will keep spending in order to keep a gap that allows to win more often and that's why many people call it pay to win, and it's a direct consequence of the microtransaction system. In Asphalt 9, those who spend the most get the best cars, and that reach a peak point with the introduction of the Devil 16. You know, if you got the Legends Pass and unlock tokens back when the Hennessy Venom F5 appeared in the game, you could actually get the king of the game without massive in real life money spending, just, you know, saving a ton of tokens and getting the Legends Pass back then. The problem is that with the Devil 16 you had to actively spend money and not the 10 bucks the Legends Pass cost, but at least 300 bucks in case you already had the Venom, even more if you didn't. But you know, the Devil wasn't like the Venom F5, the Devil is in many cases way better and since it was locked behind a paywall, made the gap between the best card that those who didn't pay could get and the best card that those who could pay get so big that I do really think that at Gameloft they realized they had to do something or the difference between the devil and most of the other cards of this game would be too big to keep a balance. And that's why I think they came up with the overclock around the same time they started thinking about the devil 16 in-game performance, because if you could increase the stats of a card like the Turon for example, the performance gap between one of the best cards a free-to-play player could get and the best card of the game, which was lock behind a paywall will be smaller and that way in game love they will not have to think about permanently improving or changing some card stats like the Asphalt 8 developers did, buffing and nerfing cars around, which was proving to be quite impopular within the community. The overclock is like a safe exit to the performance difference between the best free-to-play cars a player can get and the pay-to-win ones, because you know, each overclock lasts between 5 and 7 days, as far as I can guess, and it's not something that you can apply to any car you want, but to those within the overclock cars pool that Gameloft will generate each season. One of the good things about the overclock is that I'm pretty sure that the free-to-play Play players will have the chance to overclock at least one car each season without having to pay, you know, since the overclock chips will be available through specific time limited events. The bad thing, however, is that those who spend on offers and in the game basically will get the chance to overclock a lot more cars, since the overclock chips payout will be way more abundant through in game purchases. Is that something bad? Well, not 100%, since if a free to play player manages to overclock the proper car among those available in the season car pool, such players could pose a threat to those who paid and thus got more overclock chips. However, there is something I didn't mention yet and that's the overclock pass. You know, you don't want to think about getting overclock chips either by playing free try time limited events or you know, spending your hard earned real life money on special offers 
No problem. As I said, microtransaction is the leading monetization system these days. So in this case, Gameblock offers an easier, cheaper alternative to the two methods I have explained before. If you want to overclock your cars, you can get the overclock pass. If you purchase this pass, which I assume that it will be available for like 15 to 20 bucks, you will have all the cars available to overclock during that specific season already overclocked until the overclock pass expires. No overclock chips farming, not spending a ton in bundles, just pay your overclock pass and get all the cars available overclocked for two weeks or so, assuming that this pass lasts the same as the events or multiplayer pass. But let's get real guys, this pass is not an alternative to those who decided not to spend on this game, and I'm sorry in advance for what I'm about to say, but let's get real, it's just a business. As I told you at the beginning of this video guys, it's not meant to be utopic, fair and equal. They have to offer something of value in order to encourage people to spend so they can keep bringing content, maintaining the servers and yes, even getting profits because that's basically how business work. They offer you two ways of getting overclocked chips so you can get some cards with better stats to have a chance to fix those players uh, with better cards because they paid but if you want it easier you can get the overclock pass which I'm sure will be cheaper and just easier to get the job done. That's the reality and I understand that many of you guys will be frustrated but there is nothing to do with it because that's how things work if you want to make your business to make you know some profit. It was either to get overclock or seeing a ton of unpopular, controversial and most likely permanent nerfs and buzz that will have completely reshaped the game into either something straight up worse or more unfair or maybe better but still unfair to a part of the community. It kinda makes sense that Gameloft introduced the overclock system since the stats increases are not permanent and depends on the overclockable cards pool each season introduces. As unfair as it may seem to those who want to play without spending a single dollar no matter what, I can do nothing but understand why does it make sense from a business perspective. And since it's a new feature like season tokens were at a certain point, I'm pretty much sure that Gameblog will implement changes on the overclock system, the upcoming updates, to make it better for everyone. Even for those who don't want to or just, you know, can't pay real life money in Asphalt 9 Legend. And remember, if they see that the overclock is failing update after update, you know, they may even remove it, just like they did with season tokens. But remember one thing, if by any chance Gameblog decide to remove the overclock, rest assured that whatever comes next will likely be a wave of nerfs and permanent changes to many cards that I can guarantee you all guys that will affect both free to play and pay to win players alike. At last but not least, I would like to point out something, if there is a card that will likely never get the option to be overclocked, that's the Devil 16 and that would make sense. As the first card that truly made a difference with all the other cards, even the Venom F5, I'm pretty sure that will likely never get the chance to be overclocked or that if it ever gets overclocked won't have a massive difference with the normal stats, since the Devil 16 stats are already at the limit of this game engine and tracks design. It can go way further without being impossible to drive. So that was pretty much everything I wanted to say guys, I'm aware that many of you will disagree with me and I absolutely respect that but please behave in the comment section where you all are invited to share your thoughts about this new update and make sure to drop your like and subscribe in order to not to miss anything about Asphalt 9 Legends and of course I will see you really soon with much more Asphalt content. Goodbye guys!